So team, welcome to the day one for our new Selenium training batch, the batch for August 16th, 2012 batch. And uh, it's been a long time since I've taken a live webinar, so it's really nice to come back to this. But let's start with the basics. Let's go about what we're going to do and how we accomplish the whole thing. So uh, first of all, team, there are over 200 people who have registered for this training. And the capacity for the batch was 200, so it is full. So there's no more possibility of new registrations that happen. And I'm sure my team must be getting series of calls saying that they cannot register, they cannot attend these demo classes. So what's going to happen is post this session, uh, we will try and release a few seats back and try and bring more people for the day to demo. Okay. So I've just put two demo classes as part of this go to training invite. The first one is scheduled today that we're having now. The second will be for the 21st, that is the Tuesday. The reason I've given about four or five days gap in between is I want you to kindly go and review those basic videos um, that I keep telling. All right, where can you find them? If you go to my website, seleniumelearn.com, you will see the new live training, right? So under here, I believe um, in the form itself, you can see those videos. These are the basic videos. The reason I want you to watch them is so that you get a good basic understanding and we don't have to go through a lot of these topics again and again. So here are the three videos that are listed, day one, day two, day three. So please use those, watch them before you come back to day two. Okay. So today's session is trying to set our overall context of what we're going to be doing, how we're going to go about, what we cover and so on. All right. The course content as is, you will see it in the course content tab on the website. You can go here and you'll see the list of various topics that are covered. Okay. But do note team, I don't go in a topic manner, rather I go in a project manner. So we take a project and as part of trying to execute this project as automation test engineers, then we try and learn a lot about Selenium, the tool, the programming aspects and so on. That makes it more interesting, that makes it much more easier for you to um, gather the knowledge and so on. Right? So if you go under the course content, you will see all the different topics that are getting covered as part of the training. Okay? You can also see that there will be uh, all these videos are there in our screencast account. So I'm going to go to the selenium.elearn. Let me quickly log in. Uh, recorded topics. Okay, there you go. So here is the folder with over 60 odd videos that have got each of those topics expanded. Uh, topics on simple things like Selenium IDE, topics on the J unit basics, uh, Eclipse, how do we inst install what is this AND tool? How do we install? So each and every aspect of it, Java basics, how do we read and write from Excel? So every topic has been taken in here in a very detailed manner. But more importantly, the whole purpose is just not to do the basic level of automation. This course is all about how do we go towards the road of advanced automation testing, right? Because that is what will give you the edge in the market. That is the real skill that makes you stand out from anyone else. And to do that, we need to do a lot of programming. And the level of programming that we need, you will come across all of those in this folder. You will also see the different types of frameworks. A lot of focus is on frameworks, data-driven, keyword-driven, hybrid frameworks using both remote control and the web driver. All right. So all of these topics are here. You also have access. So this is basically the access that you get to the videos and everything uh, for all the confirmed participants. Team, uh, quick check on my audio. Just wanted to make sure is my voice okay for everyone or do you in general have uh, any one issue? Because there are over 100 participants currently in this live session. Just want to make sure you all can hear. I think most can. Audio is good. I think, yeah, I, I, unless um, video is sluggish. Okay, so uh, 
if video is sluggish, I'm also doing a record of it. So what will happen is once we give you the access to the video, you can continue to go back and revisit and rewind the whole thing. Okay. So this is one. I've shown you screencast. I've shown you the uh, topics. I also wanted to quickly show you something else. Let me go back to the website. So yeah, there were a few topics that I promised to show for a long time. And some of them have been uh, now planned as part of this webinar. So I'll try and do it live and then you'll also have the access to the recorded sessions of it. Okay. And the topics are things like how do we work with Maven, Hudson, uh, the version control tools, testing of Flash or Flex based applications, little bit more on cross browser testing. Uh, so a lot of new things that I want to try and add. Now instead of going in the typical route, we will try and take a little different route in terms of the projects and so on. Okay, so uh, basically because we want to do a lot of flash testing and so on, I, I believe that the uh, good starting point that we should start to play around and emphasize the word playing because this is all about playing with this tool, Selenium, the IDE, the RC, the various other programming aspects to it and really slowly becoming master set. Okay, this tool is so much in demand in the market today that I cannot tell you. There is a huge demand. There is unfortunately very little supply. For example, when I sent out the email saying that, hey, listen, I have some good openings for Selenium, um, you know, engineers, I hardly get any uh, fillings for those. But I want to give you that confidence that, yes, we can go forward for those projects. Okay. So we will go very advanced into this. All right. So what do I want to cover? Let's go back. See, I'm going to uh, put it into a small, simple document so that we all uh, know what we will do. Uh, let's start with a new document. I'm going to take this format for now. I was trying to install my office into this new system. Hopefully, it should have been done by now. Let's see. Ah, there you go. So, this is good. But this is a different old one. Okay. So, um, let me see if I can start with an Excel. Yeah, Excel is a good place to start. I always keep going back to that team, if you remember, uh, primarily because it's so easy for us to uh, start planning what we will do. So today, uh, we will not go too uh, deep into what we're trying to do right now. Uh, we will go at a very superficial level, OK? Let's just play around with Selenium ID. Let's play around with uh, one simple application. We can move forward from there, OK? So the first thing you need to do, team, is make sure that you've got your IDE installed in a proper fashion. Uh, to do that, uh, you have to get to your Firefox browser. That's your good starting point. And you can search, go, uh, go for uh, add-ins and search for uh, Selenium IDE. And then you will see that you have a web developer IDE installed out here. Okay. The instructions for those and how we get there is all there as part of those three videos that I showed you earlier in this session. All right. So once you click on Selenium IDE, you'll see uh, the uh, main starting point of how we go about learning Selenium team. Right. So this is a great point to start, but we will not use IDE for more than two or three sessions from now. Okay. Good starting point, but we'll not stick there. Why? There is so much that we need to do in terms of programming. Okay, we need to get to the J unit, test ng, the frameworks because that is where our core strength is going to be. Okay, now let's just quickly look at what application we're going to take and what we're going to do with it. I'm going to start with YouTube.com team. Okay, so let me uh, quickly. So the reason I wanted to take YouTube team, if you remember, is that there is a lot of there, there is a lot of uh, uh, demand for flash based testing these days in the market. So if if we need to do a lot of flash based testing, we can use this, and I'll tell you why for later. Okay, not necessarily that it is. It is important to add it to our current portfolio. Okay, so here is YouTube.com. Now, what is it that we want to do? Okay, let's go with an assumption that you are going to learn Selenium, but the first day is to just play around with this IDE. So the first thing I want you to do, team, is 
we will be focusing on YouTube for the next few sessions. So I want you to bring up your new Firefox browser with YouTube to one half of your window. That way you are able to see YouTube very clearly. On the other half of your window, I want you to bring up this IDE thing. The reason this IDE is important is it will show you exactly what we are doing and how this tool is going to go about automated. Okay. On IDE, you see uh, different sets of uh, frames and windows. It's a very simple tool. All that it is trying to do is this Selenium IDE is trying to record all the user activities that you see up here that we perform into different steps so that it can repeat them over and over again. So what do I mean? I can start with a brand new test case, okay? Or let's just close this. Let's not save it. Go to Firefox, Web Developer, and Selenium IDE. I believe this is the latest version of Firefox. It doesn't matter even if you have an old one. That's fine, okay? You can use whatever version is there. Um, okay, this is 14. I think this is the latest one right now, right? So now, anything that you do will get recorded out here, and that will give us the ability to be able to go back and replay them. So why are we trying to do all this? How do we go about doing automation testing? Okay, that's those two words that is very important. Automation testing. So what do I mean by automation testing? Automation testing is all about going into the moving away from your manual portion of testing into more automated portion. Okay, so our focus is on automation. This is the key thing. How do we automate? Testing is a fairly simple process. We will be coming to it as we get into uh, creating more test plan and structure. Okay, So for automation, one of the most prominent tools in the market today is Selenium. So Selenium is a very preferred automation testing tool. How does it automate? How does it really work? We will look at it right now. All right. What it does is it is all about trying to see if an application is working the way it is supposed to be behaving, right? What do I mean? For example, a user comes to youtube.com, okay? And let's say searches for a word called selenium out here, all right? So once the user types selenium, this is a command that I perform, okay? I am a visitor for YouTube. YouTube.com, the company has built this application so that users like us can effectively work and use this, right? So I'm saying I want to search for Selenium in this field. So I click Selenium and I click on the search button. What happens? It will start to show me different videos on it, right? So uh, this is one of my videos that has come up on top here. And you are able to go ahead and then play those and see if it is working and so on, right? And this is the basic functionality of YouTube look at any video, play it and see if it is working, right? Now, what did Selenium IDE do when we perform these steps on the right side, okay? Now, this is the portion where we are playing around on the application, right? This is our application and sometimes we call it something as application under test or AUT, okay? But forget about jargons for now, it's just an application. The left side, this is your Selenium IDE window. What did it do? It is basically by default in what you call as a recording mode. Do you see this red button? It is by default pressed in. So it is clicked. Now I could say stop recording. Okay. What did Selenium IDE do? As I went about doing certain activities, it has captured those activities and it put those in these steps out here. Why did it do that? It did that for a very simple reason. All right. Every application has a expected functionality. Okay. If I do steps like A, B, C, D, then this is how it is supposed to work. Right. So it has understood that these are the steps to perform. Now it has the ability to go back and automatically produce the same steps again. How? Now we have recorded, I can say, hey, replay or run those. By clicking this button, I'm going to run the entire test case. If I have multiple ones, it will do the same, right? So now it is going to try and execute the same and see if every step is a pass or fail. So how did it do that? It did it based on 
answering those two very very important questions teams okay if i am working on this application i am performing specific things what are they i'm performing in terms of what is it that the user is doing where is it that the user is doing certain thing and this is all about uh, using your keyboard and mouse to make that happen right so we provide the inputs so I went to YouTube using my mouse I clicked this space here this edit field I started to write selenium right and I went and clicked on this button correct so this is what we perform and that is exactly what is captured here okay it said open something open what this is the base URL that it is open then it said type something type what selenium is the word that it has typed but where should it type that and that is what it uses the target to identify it okay and then there are other commands like click and wait and this and this right so the way I want you to take about your first steps to master this tool is not by knowing hey, what is this command what is this target value it will take you a lot of time by trying to uh, memorize what each of them do. I want you to just play around for example uh, I continue to do a record and I say okay if I click this again what will happen now if I go in and let's say click on the subscribe what will happen right so what is happening on the ID that is what will give you a great control on uh, how to master go, going with mastering this team. Okay, this is the application. Now, what is my plan? My plan is this. Okay, and I'm not going to put it onto a document like I typically do for this session one, but I want to create a few structured tests. What are they? The tests are very simple. Okay, let's call them. And in fact, you know what? I'll keep going back to this. So I'll say. I want to test something okay I'll say test name okay and details what are they I want to test let's say if um, YouTube search works correctly what do I mean I'm saying that youtube.com is an application and it has a search feature that is supposed to work right that is the uh, details of it so I'm going to put this here and here I'll say search now there is a name to each test uh, that I want to do and there is some details to it but there could be multiple steps also to each of them right so what we will do is let's go about writing it down as different steps so I'll say this is test name okay steps all right and details of it so this now is search first thing is go to youtube.com right the second the same test what I'm going to do is I'm going to say enter a search term I'm staying with very simple functionality team because it is very important for us to get our basic concepts in then it is easy for us to go forward okay search okay verify that the uh, what are we searching here what did we get Let's go back to YouTube. Uh, Selenium. And then click. So let's say that I'm seeing if results are appearing here. Okay. Forget about ID at the moment. So I'm saying verify that enter a search term. And in this case, you know what? Let's specify which search term I will say. Selenium. Okay. Verify will come later click the search button or image right search search verify that the results show that's it this is my main uh, thing that I want to do what am I saying hey as part of a simple search functionality there are four steps to perform why did we write this four steps it is to be able to go in a very process structured manner that this is what we want to do right and then we go about executing it manually and see if this works or not. so for every step I can say what happened hey did this work is it a pass or did it fail right so that we put in as we go about doing it. 
So this is one good test. Now let's do one more test. Let's start again from YouTube. Uh, let's say we talk about sign in as a new test. Okay. So I'll say sign in. Um, sign in. What should I say here? Bad email. Okay. Let's say there's a sign in process that I want to do but I don't want to put in the correct email and see what happens with it. So I'm writing down steps for this. So to do a sign-in process, what are the steps? Go to youtube.com, then we click on the sign-in button. See, the steps start changing depending on what the user has to uh, accomplish. Click the sign-in button. And once we click the sign-in button, then we are forward it to actually perform the signing. So here I can enter the email, I can enter a password, I can then click on sign in. So let's quickly do this. Enter email, enter password, click, what was that? Sign in button again. Okay. And then we'll say confirm error message. Okay. So for example, if I go in here and say something at something.com, Okay, and say so this is the password. Okay, this is what I'm assuming. But if it's a bad thing, then I'm expecting to see this. The username or password you entered is incorrect. All right. Now I'll say sign in. Bad email. This is what we see. Now what we did is we created two steps team overall. So let me put it into a very quick. Um, Let me give it a little bit of better feel so that we are very easy for us to go about building this. All right? All about this. So now I have a test name and each of these that we perform that you see here is actually called as a scenario, a functionality or a specific test case that we want to execute. All right? And that is why we can go about calling this as a test case name. And a test case is built upon multiple, one or more test steps. And we'll say that these are the test steps for it. Okay. Now, if this is the set of information that I'm doing, why should I use the Selenium IDE to perform all this? If, if Did you see this team? As I went about doing it, if you look at it, it is the same steps that whatever I've been performing are already getting recorded here. Let us not worry about these steps for now. Let's start absolutely brand new. So file. Uh, actually close it. I don't need this. Selenium ID. Now we will go about executing it depending on what we see. Okay. So I have now not two things uh, but I have three things. I have my ID out here which I'm going to reduce it a little bit. This is my Excel which is good. This is my application. Okay, so I have my Excel, my application, and my Selenium ID. Okay, so what I will do is I will start recording these steps and these steps and then save them as different test cases. Okay, so the first thing you could do is say file new test case. Since it's already new test case, you can go in right click and go to the properties and let's call this as search okay we're going to title name this test case as search that is the functionality that we do now how did we perform search the first thing that we did is it recording yes go to youtube.com and perform these steps the first step was going to youtube.com Right now, the second is enter a search term. What is it that we are trying to do? Selenium, right? And I hit a tab after that. You will see two commands getting uh, loaded: open and type. What are these commands? Team will come to it very slowly. Don't worry about that. Next is click the search button or image. I am exactly following those steps, right? Third is verify that the results. Show. How do I verify that the results are showing up here? How do I know that this is the text that I'm seeing? And that is where the IDE gets smarter at giving you additional features. How? Once you've installed IDE and you're doing a record, if you right click on it, 
and you will see different commands that you can pass through it. And the command that I want you to do, I want you to actually take open YouTube and perform the same things that I'm showing you right now. All right. It'll be a great practice for you as you're doing it. I will say verify text. Do you see this? Now, is this the one? How do I know this is the one? Because you're seeing me showing you that this is how you verify if a text is there or not. All right. Now, I'm going to click on it. And here I have performed those four steps exactly like we have done here. Okay. Why am I doing all these basic things? It's very important thing because from day three onwards, we're going to get into something called as formats. We're going to change it into a Java test ng or JUnit format. And we will start doing advanced programming slowly. Okay. But these are our first steps. And then we will go into in fact, treating this as one large project end to end and by the end of which you get a real strength in this whole automation uh, stuff. Okay. So for now, we have done what I've called as a new test case. Okay. Done. So make sure that you've saved your test case and definitely do a test run. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to go to our uh, Selenium folder. I'm going to create a new folder for this batch. I'm going to call this as A16 uh, 2012. Okay. And in here, I will put this as uh, YT. This is YT, right? Underscore search. This is a test case. And save it. So now the test case has been saved. But do make sure as soon as you do a save that run it and see if it is working correctly or not. How do you know if it is working? And that is about replaying. What is the first step? Record, then run it. How long are we going to do this record and run? For the first two sessions because we'll get our fundamentals clear and then we will go into. But how is it identifying using this target, command, value, the experts and all that? Watch those three videos that I showed you at the beginning of it. Okay, That will tell you in depth what we're doing. Here we are going about building a very huge project. Okay, We by the end of day uh, 12 or 13, you will see that we've created a huge Excel with everything structured very, very well for us. Okay. Now, this you could further expand by saying you want to do a fast run or a slow run or you want to do more sequential runs by uh, playing around with the ID. Okay. But at this time, I just want to take a quick uh, pause and make sure that if everyone is comfortable. If you have any questions, I will not be able to take an audio question at the moment because there are over 100 participants in this session right now. But I'll request you to put it in the chat, please. So take a moment. Any questions that you have not related with the training but what we are doing today, put it in the uh, chat and I'll try and address it. Let me go over some I've received so far. Uh, how proficient do I need to be in programming? So, Syed, very important to realize why and how, what you need to know about programming. Okay, I know a lot of uh, training or uh, uh, you know trainers have been doing this. That uh, let's learn programming first, the coding aspect, and then Selenium because it is important. But if I start teaching you programming, like let's say Java or PHP or Ruby on Rails and so on, okay. There is no end to learning how much and where we have to go with it. Okay, We are not developers. We are going to be automation test engineers. For automation test engineers, there is a certain extent to which you have to learn programming. The best way for that is not to start with programming. is to start with what we need to be doing as automation and slowly learn programming. Okay, You need to learn, I would say, about 40-50% of uh, the overall structure of programming and each of those things that you require is either there as part of this live webinars or the recorded videos. All right. Beyond this, you don't need anything else. While in recording mode, you open Excel as well. Has it recorded on Excel as well or only browser? So, Sakit, what Selenium does is it does a record only on a browser. Okay. And the IDE is a recording tool only available with your Firefox. Okay. Once I record these steps using Selenium ID, like the one I showed you, right? I can then move it into programming language and run it on any other browser. Record using ID on a Firefox web browser only. 
if I do something on the Excel in between it doesn't record those steps how are we going to select the automation test cases yes um, so the way we will do that for that uh, Harish is that automation test cases is about here I have certain ways I can see these go about do it manually now once I come to an IDE you will see that hey I've recorded one this is done now I will go and say I'm going to create a new test case okay this is the one and let's continue to record for the oops, uh, second test scenario or case that we created sign in bad email okay so uh, uh, before I do that let me quickly go back to that search thing do you see this green backgrounds to each of the steps this is basically what uh, represents the fact that um, the steps when executed did not fail okay now play around why do I say play around for example okay if I say change the value of this do you see this I search for selenium so instead of selenium here is where I can edit my test step I'll say that I'm searching for QTP the results may vary correct now let's see if I execute this test what will happen will it pass or will it fail I've got an altogether different uh, results about 5,000 results what was it earlier we expected to see 13,000 results but what we got are 5,000 results and that means that this step failed was it expected yes because I changed something but we have not taught selenium that hey this changed right and this level of being able to change the values and be able to recognize things differently is what we will do when we get into the programming okay now uh, let me quickly do one more record of the second test case and come back okay so I'm gonna double click on this untitled go to file and save this test case as uh, yt underscore sign in underscore bad I'll say all right now let's go back and start from the beginning okay here record look at these steps and perform it team if you have someone who's already gone advanced beyond ID fair enough don't worry about this come back straight for day three we'll start programming okay but if you're someone who still want from the fundamentals do exactly what I'm saying please the application may change as and when depending on when you're looking at it but perform these steps like it is it will give you a lot of uh, confidence because going forward things will get uh, complicated so do not miss anything that I'm showing you okay now new test case go about doing the same did I go to youtube.com yes now what do I need to do do I need to enter uh, selenium here no look at what we need to do I need to click on the sign in button so I'm gonna say click is it recording yes good now it is generating those steps for it okay so again I'm gonna enter some uh, random email some random password okay and I'm going to click on sign in okay now what do I want to verify do you remember from the first test case we want to verify if the username or password you entered is incorrect correct so I'm going to right click here and go back here and see verify text present but what about this open or show all available comments forget about it for now okay there's so much we have to get into basic fundamentals this is what verify if a text is there do something expect something do something expect something then we that's how we are testing for everything I'm going to say verify if this text is present great what did we do we finished our recording so stop that record now make sure that you save the test case okay uh, and let's do a run and see okay let's test only run this test case so I did play current test case or this one is play entire test suite okay so it is performing everything and making sure that it has got this now if I go here and change the email to something else for example okay it is going to do the same but will it fail or will it succeed can someone tell me what I did is as part of the second test case see this one you know what I'm gonna put another column which will make things even easier for us and I'll say TC okay let's copy this okay test case let's call it as TC because it is easy right ID why um, 
why do I want to call it as TCID? So that I can say, hey, let's say this is TC001 and give it something that is easy instead of having the whole thing. And here I'll say this is TC002. See, what we are doing is we are slowly advancing and maturing in the way we handle things. Okay, I'm going to go back to our Selenium folder. I'm going to put it in here and call this as YT Game Plan. Actually, what? Playing around. That's the name I'm going to give it for now. Okay, so this is done. So what we've done is this. So my question was, when I did something on search, right, like instead of Selenium, I changed it to QTP, right? But this failed. Do you see this? It's red. It is not uh, green in background. The reason it was a pa it failed is because it expected something else. Was this correct? Was it supposed to fail? Yes. Now, without executing this test, if I changed this email, which I did right now, for example, and I run this, should this also fail? And should this fail? No. Yes, it will fail. Nope, it will not fail. So, mixed answers. So, before running, look at it very simply. Okay, the way we have to do this is Selenium is not a smart tool. It has nothing, but it is a very ob obedient tool in the sense if you ask it to do a, B, D, F, it will do A, B, D, F. It will not say that you said A, B, hey, what happened to C? You missed C, user. Should I put C into it? Nope. It will not. It will be very obedient to exactly what you ask it to do. Okay? So, if you give specific commands, it will search for it. Okay? Now, the functionality of the application, so that's where the application functionality comes back to us, is that if I enter an invalid email address, it will always show the same message. Okay? However, if the message was the username or password, blah, 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 dot com, you entered is incorrect, then it may fail. Correct? Hopefully. I'm not sure. Let's experiment. Why? Because we're still playing around this. Run this and see. What is happening? I can't see anything on uh, Firefox. You can uh, bring the window up. You should be able to see it. But even otherwise, it is okay. What is most important is see if this is happening. Why is this yellow? Yellow represents that that specific step is getting executed right now. Okay. So why is it taking so long? If you notice, it is because the page is loading. So one of the aspects is Selenium is going to wait for a certain amount of time till the page loads before it starts to perform those actions on it. Okay. Why? It has been designed to do that. Why? Because if the page doesn't load, it may not be doing, it may be doing it too early, right? And it may not find those email fields or password fields to do something. Did it fail? Nope, it didn't. Okay, so that's what it is all about. So we have created these few test cases. Now, I save test case as, no, save test case and save this test case also. Okay, we have created two test cases. Okay, I have created also a simple Excel sheet with the names of those test cases, right? Now, we are passing certain information, we're getting certain things and all of this. Now, what we will do is we will slowly start taking these back into our programming language and start playing it with it more. Okay, but please do note you have to go back and watch those basic videos. Uh, if you do not, we are skipping a lot of things before we go advance. Okay, you will be falling behind, please. So before Tuesday sessions, you've got a whole set of good four or five days. Please use them for it. Now, let me go back. I did interrupt the uh, series of questions that was coming up earlier. Now, I know C Sharp, but not Java. Okay, so one of the other aspects is that the reason Selenium has picked up popularity has its many aspects to it. But one of the reasons is that the format in which you can do programming as a backend is varying. It's not just VB script like QTP has. It has multiple things in it. Right. What is the advantage? The advantage is different companies have used different technologies uh, and have already got that knowledge in their team. They have Java developers, their Ruby shop or a Python shop. What do I mean by shop? They basically have been developing everything using that technology. So for them, it is easy to implement Selenium because they already have that skill uh, in those technologies. Now, 
if you are learning, which one do you pick? So, for example, when I wanted to learn it, I had a big question, which one should I take? Uh, is it Java or Python or uh, Ruby on Rails or which one? Or .NET. So, I took something which I knew from earlier, so it was easy for me. That way, Java was an uh, obvious choice. But once you learn one aspect of the programming, it is comparatively much easier to get to the other. Okay? I'm not saying it is absolutely easy. It is not like with the switch, uh, turn on, turn off, you can move to the other. But get a small book of the other and start playing around. But do one programming language correctly. Then do it, just get a simple book and you can easily start doing it for the other. Okay? Is this session being recorded? Yes. Should I be able to replay later? Yes. Not only this session, every other session. And so has every other session from earlier. Uh, webinars being recorded so you can always go back to screencast so for all the users who of you have the access you will see uh, the recorded sessions available for you uh, on screencast so uh, that's there but uh, let's try and avoid the training questions in this place is okay but uh, we will put it on YouTube we will share the link you can start to watch it how are we going to select the test automation Sorry, I think that's where I stopped last time so test automation uh, we will come to it Right now, we have not gone to, do I want to execute this or do I want to execute this? And in fact, good question for me to put it up here, okay? So, and I will call this as execute, okay? And we can start saying if we want to execute this or not. If you see team, almost every batch I try and take a different approach in what I'm doing. This one, the reason is I'm not doing three, four different projects in one live uh, uh, batch. I'm trying to take one project on YouTube but do uh, very extensively on it, okay? We'll go very deep into one project. Oof, okay, uh, that's good. Uh, in the welcome email, Anthony, uh, it said there's going to be some manual testing and all that. Yeah, so uh, welcome email and all that. Please reply back to those emails for questions. The, regarding the manual testing, so I've started to create recorded webinars, not live. I'm recording them offline, and I'll start to publish them slowly, okay? So once I announce it, uh, you'll start seeing them. But hopefully the first couple of videos should be out very soon for you. Are you going to teach some C Sharp? No, nope, I'm not touching C Sharp in this right now. Selenium only comes with Firefox browser. So Swapna, so be very careful in choosing those words. Okay, What is Selenium? Selenium, there are various aspects to it. One of the things about Selenium is the fact that there's an IDE. Selenium IDE comes with or rather you can install that as an add-on to Firefox browser yes okay but once we get to running this test you can do it on any browser could I get to see all the recorded video do I have access to the video I don't know Smith if you have it you have to send an email please which company has developed this tool so it's an open source there have been a lot of contributors across the world which has done it but the core website uh, through which everything is being communicated is selenium hq.org You can go to this website. This is the main um, Selenium headquarters. This is where everything is being communicated, distributed, and so on. Do you have to run only on open browser? Will Selenium not open the browser while running the test? Yeah, so if your browser is not open, then it will automatically do it. If you ask me, I don't even know. I don't even care because ID is a good starting block for us to start to learn. It is not the place where we'll stick with only. Okay. Uh, let's see, anything else? Is there any scope for Selenium ID in automation world? Is there any scope? Yeah, for beginners, let's say that we are testing and we want to just evaluate. So what a lot of companies will do is, hey, you know what? Let's not go into aggressive automation right now. Let's just record about bunches or about 100 few uh, scripts like this and keep it ready, okay? And then we will say uh, there's something called as a test suite, okay? So test suite makes one or more test case together. All right, and they can say run the entire test suite. So they're able to do very simple automation, but uh, you need more power and that's where we'll get into the programming. Would you share this video? Yes, if it'll fail since the recorded value is not, okay. So that was the question that I've asked. Um, I'm not um, answering anything on QTP or QC on here, please. Company to do the automation. PHP, is it possible to do so? Yes, so you can. If you look at all of these, yeah, the different uh, languages that uh, get uh, addressed with it. 
So RC and web driver, right? So RC is something called a Selenium remote control or using Selenium server. And this is, uh, and there's another aspect to it called as web driver. So you have both of those options available in very detailed manner uh, in the required topics folder. However, we may focus on one of them uh, and we'll focus on the latest one, which is the web driver. Okay. So how many classes would be there? There are over uh, 50 plus hours of recorded videos for end-to-end -end learning. This project that we're trying to do, this one project uh, on this live webinar batch, we will probably do about 14, 15 hours on it. All right, uh, let me see. So yeah, Tim, uh, again, a lot of people cannot attend it because they come from different locations in the world. You have different aspects. So that's why it gets recorded, it gets hosted. So you'll have access to all of them. Okay. So uh, I don't want to go too deep into it, but I definitely want to uh, uh, give this to you that do follow with one batch okay if you are in a fast track to learn you can go to the screencast folder you have a fast track folder from previous live batches that you can take and quickly watch okay but my intent is very simple i want to be able to identify this whole one batch where i'm taking you from day one to day end follow with me either live or recorded but within one month's time from now i want to really get a lot of you into job ready state that is the intent okay so bear with me on a lot of things that we will do we will get into programming but we will not go very complicated at the beginning slowly we will get there i will teach java as part of this we will do java j unit and test engine okay let's see if there's anything else that i need to quickly do so team, any other questions? Uh, I didn't want to have any more uh, in terms of the topic itself today, but we will come to it uh, in day two. Yeah, so if it's good if you have VBScript knowledge or any other programming language, a uh, lot of these aspects uh, are easy for you to understand and learn. If you are, sorry, one second, please. Oops, one second, team. Uh, if it's just starting out in automation training, would it be advisable to go for QTP first thing or Selenium? So QTP or Selenium, it's a big question. Uh, if you're, uh, I would say right now you're doing Selenium so you can go with it. It is not significant difference. QTP may be slightly easier to learn, but uh, still yeah, it's not too much of a difference. So, but Selenium has got a much better market today. So you should definitely learn this tool. Okay. All right, everyone. Uh, thank you then. That's it for uh, the day one. I'll see you on day two. And we will be sending you uh, the recorded version of this uh, later in the day. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice day. Bye now. Thank you.